It was a race against time. And back in January, University of Queensland virus experts were confident. We're aiming to have something that's ready to go into humans in 16 weeks' time. And in early clinical trials, it looked promising. The vaccine was shown to be safe and extremely well tolerated in all of our vaccinees. 216 people in all. The problem was the use of an HIV protein used in the molecular clamp technology. It was a small fragment of HIV and scientists were aware of the risks of false positive results. There was a theoretical risk of this, we thought, albeit a very low risk. In a shock result, everyone who had the vaccine came up with the false positive. The federal government was told on Monday and jointly today with CSL, it was decided to halt the project. The risk to vaccine confidence was the principal issue here. It was a very, very good technology. It was looking like it was going to make antibodies and it probably would have worked very well as a vaccine. But it would have been hard to convince the public it was safe. It's certainly a tough day for the, for the team. Uh, to get this uh, to get this news. Especially seeing the very positive data come out of the trial. It's a very sad time, but also we're very proud of what we have achieved. Trial participants didn't know if they were taking the vaccine or a placebo. It's just such a terrible shame that it is ending this way, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. I have no concerns about recording a false positive. Heather Shearer says researchers were very upfront about any risk. I knew that they were using a modified part of the HIV virus, but the actual possibility of getting HIV was impossible. The UQ scientists are leaders in clamp technology and did have other options from the start. In hindsight, you know, the UQ team, of course, it's a wonderful thing. We would look back and perhaps change the molecular clamp that they were using because there are other options. Um, but, you know, they went ahead with this and, they, you know, everyone knew that this was a possibility. Uh, because patients were warned about it. The Queensland government invested $10 million into the research with no regrets. They've been working night and day. I mean, they have been making the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, but of course, there are going to be some winners and losers when it comes to vaccines. What has happened today is not a surprise to the government. Um, but what is important is that the plan was in place to deal with this. So the race for a vaccine continues. I think the world is in safe hands as we bow out of this project. Lexi Hamilton-Smith, ABC News. FaceTime for the first time in nine months. All but one of the nation's leaders in the same room. We're working together and Australia is coming back from COVID-19. A sign of progress in the COVID recovery amid a vaccine setback. Every cent we have invested has been money well spent. Every single cent. Australia's hedged its bets in the global race, investing billions in four potential candidates. With the University of Queensland trial cancelled, extra stocks of the others are on order. The government's now purchased nearly 54 million doses of Oxford's AstraZeneca vaccine, which can be made locally, and 51 million doses of the Novavax shot produced in Europe. Enough to cover the entire population, if either, is approved. Australia's also secured 10 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine, being rolled out right now across the UK. Overseas, vaccination is the, the only thing they've got. Frankly. Australia has a luxury afforded to few other countries, zero COVID spread. The first vaccine here could be rolled out before March and when it is... We want to ensure that Australians, and I think all of us feel very strongly this way, have full confidence that when it gets the tick, they can get the jab. As National Cabinet met, Australia reached a significant milestone. For the first time since February, seven days straight without any community transmission. The leaders are determined to build on the success, which means maintaining a Fortress Australia approach. The policy has been crucial in the response to COVID-19, but it's left tens of thousands of Australians stranded overseas with little hope of returning home any time soon. I'm not happy to see the quarantine system move outside of the hotels at this stage. I think that would be too high a risk. The Prime Minister and I had a conversation last night about us lifting our numbers and we're very confident we'll be able to do that. Offering perhaps a glimmer of hope as 2020 draws to a close. Jane Norman, ABC News, Canberra.